Oh, aren't you a cute one? Aren't you a cute one? Oh, she's still so tired. Oh, tired baby. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> I love my kid. Oh, look at her. <laughs> kid. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Today, one from the 2016 Japanese Mathematics Olympiad. We need to express the square root of 11 to the 4th power plus 100 to the 4th power plus 111 to the 4th power divided by 2 as an integer. And I really enjoyed this question. And I think you are going to do so too. By the way, if you have never dealt with square roots and the like, why not make sure to check out some of the contest mathematics courses over on Brilliant. More information at the end of the video, but if you're not yet familiar with all of the stuff, check out the link at the top of the description. Also, at the moment I'm posting so many videos over on Flemmy Sword, high quality videos, they turned out really well. Please check them out. Support the other channel this way. Um, yeah, link down in the description. It would mean a lot to me. Even if you're not into woodworking, you're most definitely going to like those videos. Trust me. <laughs> okay, and now we are going to dive right in. So, the first thing I thought of when uh, this question said we need to express this square root right here as an integer is that if you want to have an integer, all of this that we have under the square root, the radicand, must be a perfect square overall. Also, what we need to have as a condition is that the numerator is divisible by 2, meaning at first we need to check before we even get started if we have an even number up here. Let's just check. I mean, we have an odd number to the fourth power, odd times odd, 5 times 5 is 25, is odd once again. So odd plus odd, 5 plus 5 is 10. This gives us an even number. So even number plus even number is even. Um, yeah, it's an even number overall, and now we get 100 to the fourth power, which is also even, it gives us an even number. All of this divided by 2 gives us some kind of k, a number. And we need this k to be a perfect square. Now, okay, we need to factorize this right here. I mean, you can go about it with brute force, calculating 11 to the fourth power and 111 to the fourth power, but I don't think you have time for this, then adding everything up and trying out how to find yourself the number which squared gives you this big old number that you get here in the numerator. So we need to go smart about this. We need to factor this into something squared. And for this, here's the first observation. 111, by coincidence, is the same as 100 plus 11. So we can actually rewrite this into the square root of 11 to the fourth power plus 100 to the fourth power plus 100 plus 11 to the fourth power. All of this divided by two. And now this right here turns into an algebra break problem that we can basically generalize. Namely, it turns into some kind of square root of, let's call the first number 11a, so a to the fourth power plus and the other one b to the fourth power plus, and then we are going to get a plus b to the fourth power, and all of this divided by two. Yeah, that's an algebra problem, and now we need to find out how to basically factorize the numerator into some kind of binomial to the second power. And the easiest thing we could do at this point is just write out what a plus b to the fourth power actually is. a plus b to the fourth power is the same as a plus b squared and the whole thing squared once again. And a plus b squared is the same as a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. Meaning if we were to rewrite this, we are going to get the square root of a to the fourth power plus b to the fourth power plus, and now we are going to get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab um, squared. And all of this divided by 2. This is just a binomial written out. And now we can go ahead and write out this binomial even further, just squaring everything. This is going to turn into a huge mess. You can also make use of the regular generalized binomial theorem here and uh, um, ba basically the n choose case that you are going to get. But we are going to do it very fundamentally because I can never for shit remember those coefficients and I don't really give a shit about Pascal's triangle either. So we are just going to write everything out and see what we are going to get. So this is a to the fourth power plus b to the fourth power. Next part. So we are just going to multiply this thing by itself. We are going to get a to the fourth power plus a to the fourth power plus. Then we are going to get a squared b squared. Next up we are going to get two times 
a to the third power times b. Okay, we are done with the a squared part. Let's do the same thing for the b squared. We are going to get, oh no, not the b's, not the b's, a squared, b squared. Then we are going to get plus b to the fourth power. Can we get more? Who's, who's saying more? Okay, give me some more numbers. Give me some more numbers, some more variables. Then we are going to get two times a times b to the third power plus. Now we are done with the b squared part. Now what about this part? Now we are going to get two times a to the third power times b. And then we are going to get nearly the same thing, two times um, a times b to the third power, plus, and last but not least, four times a squared b squared. Woo! That's a huge freaking square root. And all of this divided by two. And now here comes the big first condition, namely is the numerator divisible by two. We are going to see, let's bring all the parts together. We're going to get the square root of a to the fourth power plus a to the fourth power is two times a to the fourth power. Same thing with the b to the fourth power plus two times b to the fourth power. Now, next up, we are going to get a squared b squared, namely one term, two terms, and overall six terms. So plus six terms a um, squared b squared. Let's cross everything that we have used thus far, namely those. And next up, we are going to get four times a to the third power times b, okay? Um, by putting those two terms together. So plus four times a to the third power times b. And the same thing analogously with the b to the third power instead of a to the third power. Um, yeah, and all of this divided by two. And now it's very easy to see, it's marginal, it's trivial, it's um, very Kafkaesque. That <laughs> no, it's, it's not, but we can just cancel out the twos here. Um, also, this right here is going to turn into a three, and those are going to turn into a two. Meaning, what we're going to be left with at this point is that this is equal to the square root of a to the fourth power plus b to the fourth power plus. And the next thing we are going to get is um, three times a squared b squared plus two times a to the third power b plus two times um, a times b to the third power. And spoiler alert, we are almost done. Now we just have to uh, um, go at it a bit smartly. And this is the part where it took me the longest to figure out how to factor it, but it just falls into place very nicely. Let me show you. So the first cool thing is that a to the fourth power by the exponentiation was the same as a squared and the whole thing squared once again. So this right here is a squared, squared, and plus we are going to get the same thing for the b to the fourth power. So b squared, squared. Now this right here is the addition of two squares basically, and we can complete this square on this. The only thing that's really missing is the middle part, namely two times a squared, b squared. Give me a second. Oh, I already put it here very nicely. We got three times a squared b squared here. So why not split this up into two times a squared b squared plus a squared b squared. So many b's. So we are going to get um, two times a squared b squared plus a squared b squared. Now this first part right here, as mentioned before, is just a binomial basically. This right here is going to give us a squared plus b squared, but the whole thing squared. Now what we are going to be left with in our square root is now this part that we got here. Also we are going to get plus. If we take a closer look at those two that we still have left, uh, no, um, those two, I'm terribly sorry. They both have a factor of two. They both have a factor of a, and if we factor out the a, we are going to have um, a squared b here and just b to the third power here. We can also factor out a b. So let us factor this one out. We also got a squared times b squared and then plus. Now here's where the fun really begins. Namely what we're going to get is that, um, let me switch places real quick. Let's put the plus a squared b squared here for apparent reasons. Now we're going to factor out two times a b and in parentheses, if we factor this out, we still have an a squared left here plus and a b squared left here and all of this in square roots. Now well, let me rewrite the a squared b squared a little bit. By exponentiation rules this is the same as taking the multiplication of a and b and squaring this. Noticing this simple thing right here, this simple radicand took me quite a while but it just falls into place very nicely. Isn't that magical? We got x squared plus 2 
xy plus y squared. This is just a binomial once again. What we get here is the square root of, this is just x plus y squared, where our x is a squared plus b squared, and our y is plus ab, and the whole thing squared. Isn't that cool? Once I realized this, I just felt very happy because the square root and the square is going to cancel out, giving us an absolute value. Everything here is added together. All of those quantities are positive, meaning the final thing is also positive. So we can tell the um, absolute value to fuck off, basically. Meaning A in our case was 11 squared plus B in our case was 100 squared plus and A times B is 11 times 100. 11 times 100 is the same as 1100. 100 squared is the same as 10,000. So we got 10k plus and 11 squared is 121. Okay, adding those together, this right here is going to give us 1,221 and putting this onto our 10,000 is giving us uh, 11,221, which is our final answer. And this is magical in my opinion and this is why I really enjoyed this problem because this moment when I realized this turns into such a nice binomial, factorized, just made me go brrr binomial go brr and if you also want to go brr today and learn even more than we did today then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor brilliant who will kind of sponsor yet another video here on this channel Mm, can emphasize it enough, I really enjoyed this problem and working with square roots is always a lot of fun. This time I wasn't able to visualize anything, but if you are a sucker for visualizations, playing around with graphics and just getting mathematics served on the silver plate, the silver plate um, with a little bit of salad in the form of... <laughs> visuals, <laughs> then brain might be the perfect fit for you. Preint is your source for some of the best interactive learning content online. With their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry, you name it, in the STEM field, they got it. Every time I go over on Preint, I'm always surprised in a new kind of way how they are able to transform the knowledge to a person. I have never seen something like this before on the internet. Preint is definitely the powerhouse of online education, at least in my opinion. And if you take a look at their courses, for example the geometry course, it may become clear why I speak so highly of the website. Here's a very easy demonstration. You have a triangle. All the interior angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. I mean, you can prove this mathematically by putting a lot of parallels in and talking about all the angles in their, in, in their relationships. But why do it so complicated when you can show this to your class? Track on the corners, all of your students can try this out and they're going to see, oh, all the colors, they still add up to 180 degrees, no matter how you put the triangle. Isn't that magical? Just like the square root unfolded before us, Brilliant is also this magical experience in education. And if this feels like something for you, if I awakened your curiosity today, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preen.org slash flamblemaths. With it, you're going to get free access to a big portion of Preen already, but more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they already have available on the website and how much they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And yeah, this concludes it for today. Also, don't forget to check out stemage.eu my platform for handcrafted stem products and up until next video I wish you guys a flamble day. That didn't sound good. <laughs> See ya.